and dismembered these girls, then threw them into rivers, garbage cans, sewers, and other places to destroy the evidence. Hello, everyone. I'm Min. Welcome to my channel. I hope you like my last video, that very lengthy one. Since today's case is also gonna be not too short, and my eyes literally will cry when I edit it. Well, this video. Anyway, let's kick started. There is a sci-fi movie in China called *The Wandering Earth*. In this movie, in response to the crisis of the human survivors, the solution of us Chinese is to take the Earth, our home, with us. The case I'm going to talk about today can also highlight the degree to which our people values families. The culprits who committed robberies and murders took their whole families with them when they were hiding from the police. But it had a dramatic turn of the case in the end. I will first introduce the terrifying process of the whole thing, and then reveal the big plot twist at this time point. If you are not interested in the frightening details of the case, you can skip to this time point to watch the content of the plot twist. In 2002, two female escorts were robbed and killed after dismemberment in Jilin City, Jilin Province. Three men from Harbin and one woman from Jilin City were suspected of the crime. The local police investigated this case several times, but while they couldn't get them, the Ministry of Public Security issued online warning notices for them. But still, no one was caught. The four suspects and their families were just vanished, nowhere to be found. In 2011, in this aggressive web cleaning operation ordered by the Ministry of Public Security. Which was basically to reopen cold cases and see if they had any updates for them. During this operation, a patrol officer from the Harbin Public Security Bureau happened to spot the wanted notice for these four suspects. He recognized that one of them was his old friend. After four months and eleven days of massive searches, the iceberg finally emerged from the water. The four suspects and their twelve family members had long changed their names and identities. They got the ID thing done in Shanxi Province and Henan Province. Then they relocated to Inner Mongolia to escape everything. In the end of 2011, the four suspects were eventually arrested in Baotou City. On the ninth of November. 2002. Many residents reported to the police that there was this strange yet disgusting smell kept emitting from the sewerage in a civil building. When your toilets couldn't drain properly, you wouldn't report it to the police, right? You'd fetch a piper for it. But that smell and odor was too disgusting. It's like the smell of a chunk of greasy pork that has been left for days, if not months. They weren't sure though until they actually pulled out some unrecognizable minced meat from the sewerage. The police rushed to the scene, took samples to lab, and confirmed that this minced meat was from two dismembered women. They quickly cordoned the whole building, but by the time they finally locked down the building and thought that the suspects could be the tenants lived on the roof floor. Of course, there was no one left for them to arrest, but there were body parts that left inside that flat for them to discover, and the suspects' DNA's and fingerprints were all over at the scene. After a series of investigations, the police quickly narrowed down the suspects to four people: it's Yang Shubin, Zhang Yuliang, Wu Hongjie, and Ji Hongjie. The Ji Hongjie, her family name is like such, which I'm not sure how to pronounce it, as it has two different pronunciations in Chinese as a family name. It could be called as Ji or Zhe. I'm gonna call her Ji in my story. Well, easier for me to pronounce. The four of them were suspected of kidnapping two female escorts 
robbing them of 160,000 yuan and then dismembering the victims. Since the dismembered body parts clock the swords, that's how the police discovered this case. Like we have said before, the Jilin police established seven special investigation teams to solve this case, and the Ministry of Public Security also issued a wanted order. But the four of them just disappeared like a wind. Not only them, but also their families were gone. As a result, this case became a cold case. It's that until 2011, the web cleaning operation was launched across the country to clear up past wanted orders and unsolved cases. That's when the police officer, Xu Jianguo, saw this guy, Yang Shu Bin, on the wanted note as very familiar. Back in the policeman's elementary school years, he had his classmates nicknamed Warrior Monk. <laughs> um, sounds like my channel ID, which was generated by the Hearthstone. What well, this officer couldn't remember this warrior monk's real name since it was too long ago. You know, he was about 30s or turning to 40 something when he saw this one to notice. And since this Yang Shu Bin was indeed looking too much like this warrior monk from his childhood memories. And it's not hard for this police officer to call back, you know, to his old friends and old classmates to verify if this warrior monk was this Yang Shu Bin on the wanted notice. Yes, as expected, it is him. On the 1st of August 2011, Xu Jianguo, that police officer, was put to a team that investigating the case of Yang Shu Bin. These three guys on the wanted orders were from Harbin City, which means they should have many families or acquaintances were left there in the city of Harbin. But after visiting over 100 households and more than 50 units in Pingfang District, the police discovered that Yang Shubin's mother and brother had suddenly moved away in 2006, and no one knew where they had gone. Similarly, Ji Hongjie's father and brother in her hometown in Jilin City also disappeared at about the same time, but no further information was collected. This is quite rare in crime cases, as if Yang Shu Bin and Ji Hongjie fled with their entire families, it would become this really big and large target, which should make it too inconvenient to evade or hide, leaving many traces that would allow the police to track. The widespread surge in their hometowns had paid off though. The police learned that Yang Shubin's brother Yang Shukai had returned to the city of Harbin alone to seek medical treatment a few years ago. There was this friend who visited this brother Yang Shukai. He accidentally found that the names registered for Yang Shukai's medical record was not Yang Shukai. It was a strange name, Wang Xue Kai. You know, the two were friends. So that guy found it weird as why his friend Yang Shu Kai would change names to Wang Xue Kai, but didn't inform him or didn't tell him the reason why he wanted to change the names. You know, there, 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 there should be some reasons. Ha, huh. guys are also very gossip. The police did find a patient named Wang Xue Kai in that hospital, but the written address in the hospital contact book was fake. So this lead went cold. The elder brother was a wanted fugitive, and the younger brother moved his whole family and changed their names. You know the odds. Yang Shu Kai became Wang Xue Kai. So what about Yang Shu Bin? What names would he change to? Oh, here I think I should give you some notice about our Chinese names. You see, our Chinese names are often consisted of two or three characters. Like the example in this story, Yang Shu Kai changed his names to Wang Xue Kai. Our family name comes to the first, so this guy's original family name was Yang. He then changed it to Wang. Shu and Kai, um, the Chinese characters are like this. So this guy, Wang Xue Kai, kept his last character to be the same when he changed to a new name. And his brother actually had a sequential name as him. You know, he was Yang Shu Kai. His criminal brother was Yang Shu Bin. Aside from their same family names, they also 
share the same middle names. Here is a thing in China that siblings could share the same middle character. Well, some people do it, some not. It's not like a strict rule, but some did do it. Xu Jianguo inferred that the four suspects and their families were likely to have changed their names and left their hometowns, and they were about to reach a turning point on this whole searching of the suspect thing, as they began an extensive online police database search to prevent Yang Shubin and others from tampering with their age. The police expanded the age range by five years. And then screened through a database of millions of people. The screening continued for five days, but no information about Wang Xuekai was found. Since Wang Xuekai, the younger brother of the listed criminal Yang Shubin, left a trace at the hospital, so it's easier to track down someone with solid names than to go after the elusive Yang Shubin initially. Chu Jianguo, the police officer, didn't give up though. He proposed to expand the age range of the searching objects and screened it again. When they were flipping to the second last photo in the population database, they found a somewhat familiar face. A few of them crowded together and repeatedly verified that it was Yang Shukai, who had changed his name to Wang Xuekai. When they revealed the complete household information of Wang Xuekai. They found that his mother's name was Liu Fengyun, which was the same as Yang Shubin's mother. Although she was still using her real names, her date of birth has been changed from the 11th of April 1945 to the 6th of September 1948. Later, when Yang Shubin was arrested, he said that his mother suffered from schizophrenia. He was afraid that if he changed his mother's names when she was having an episode. She couldn't call out her real names, which would significantly arouse suspicions. Let's go back to the storyline. The registered residence of Wang Xuekai and Liu Fengyun was in Baotou City. According to the characteristics of Yang Xuekai, changing his names to Wang Xuekai, Xu Jianguo widened the age range to search for people named Wang Xue something in Inner Mongolia. While Baotou City is within Inner Mongolia, and they thought that you know family is always together, like I had mentioned in the Chinese name rule above. After verifying the household registrations, they finally discovered this Wang Xueli. They were overjoyed, even though this person's date of birth had been changed from the 18th of April 1970 to the 8th of May 1975. And after conducting series of investigations and verifications, they finally took the actions and arrested them all. This group confessed to committing six crimes in succession, dismembering ten female companions in total. The cases happened in various cities within Guangzhou, Zhejiang, and Jilin provinces. At the end of the year. Four of them were transferred to the hands of Jilin Provincial Police. Around the Spring Festival in the year of 2012, police from various places came to Jilin, one after another, to conduct joint investigations. However, it took quite a long time to conclude the cases since it all happened ages ago and lack of details about the victims. After being caught, Zhang Yuliang and Wang Hongye quickly confessed to the crimes they had committed in Jilin, but Yang Shubin clenched his teeth and refused to talk. That was an unexpected situation. Xu Jianguo reached out to his boss and applied to interrogate Yang Shubin himself. While、well, you know the two were friends, so after some discussions, Xu Jianguo was finally allowed to join the interrogations of Yang Shubin. In the interrogation room, they sat together and started chats. That was the first time the two met officially. Xu Jianguo did not reveal his identity when making the arrest. We haven't seen each other for over twenty years, old friend. Yang Shubin looked at the man in front of him carefully. It took him quite a while to recognize this policeman. They were neighbors and elementary school classmates. Xu Jianguo continued. I think this may be fate that allowed me to catch you, old friend. Not only is there no way out for you, 
but the time you have left won't be too long either. No matter what, you might want to give some explanation. Yang Shubin finally moved his lips and started to talk. He did not confess to the case in Jilin straight away. He began to reminisce, starting from his youth, and talked about his life. At the age of 20, Yang Shubin was brought onto the path by a man called Fati Guan. Fati Guan and gained the nickname Brother Fa. In his first experience of robbing, he was very terrified and was being the watching guy of the police for the gangs. He didn't get to actually rob anything. Well, he still got a share of the money and he didn't get caught, walked free from the crimes. So he became bolder and bolder afterwards. On the 7th of January, 1993, Yang Shubin, along with Liu Wei, Jun, and Li Jiangtao committed murder and robbery at a bleeder room in Harbin, injuring two people and killing one. His two accomplices were arrested and sentenced, but Yang Shubin fled. After that, Yang Shubin's crimes aggravated severely on the level of cruelty, but he could somehow repeatedly escape legal punishment. In November 1998, Yang Shubin and Wang Shibo came to Foshan City, Guangdong Province, kidnapped a young woman and robbed 100,000 yuan. Because the victim was left alive and would manage to report it to the police, they knew they would eventually be exposed. Wang Shibo returned to Harbin and was arrested by the local police, but Yang Shubin escaped again. This was the first time he targeted the hostages. Before the Spring Festival in the year of 2000, Yang Shubin and Zhang Yunliang killed a hostages in a robbery in a rental house in Shenzhen. They strangled and dismembered the victim. They smashed the bones with pyres and put them in five black rubbish bags. These different bags would be thrown into the river, trash cans and sewers, respectively. They robbed more than 100,000 yuan and split it equally. After the Spring Festival in 2000, Yang Shubin, Zhang Yuliang, and Ji Hongjie used the same means and methods to kill two hostages in a rental flat in Shenzhen. They robbed more than 500,000 yuan. Yang Shubin and Zhang Yuliang got 200,000 yuan each, and Ji Hongjie got 100,000 yuan. In June 2001, Yang Shubin, Zhang Yuliang, and Liu Aibin kidnapped and robbed 200,000 yuan in Shandong province. Ten days later, the local police served the case, but Yang Shubin and Zhang Yuliang disappeared. Their accomplice, Liu Aibin, was arrested and sentenced to life imprisonment. Because Liu Aibin did not reveal Yang Shubin and Zhang Yuliang in prison, they ducked away safely. In April 2002, Yang Shubin, Zhang Yuliang, and Wu Hongjie used the same means and methods to kill two hostages in a rental place in Shenzhen. They robbed more than 100,000 yuan and split it equally as usual. On the 20th of June 2001, Yang Shubin, Zhang Yuliang, and another man robbed a woman of 200,000 yuan in Shandong province using the same methods. This time, they had only beaten her but left her alive. In September 2002, Yang Shubin, Zhang Yuliang, Wang Hongye, and Ji Hongjie killed two hostages in a rental place in Jilin City, Jilin Province. They robbed 160,000 yuan and split it equally as always. On the 26th of December 2002, Yang Shubin, Ji Hongjie, and another man lured two young women into a rental place threatened them for their bank account passwords and then scammed their relatives for about 100,000 yuan in the name of doing business before disappearing. They beat the two women but did not kill them. In 2003, Yang Shubin, Zhang Yuliang and Wu Hongjie bound and beat two hostages with adhesive tape and wooden stick with a rental place in Taizhou, Zhejiang forced them to disclose their bank account passwords. Then they withdrew 160,000 yuan, but killed and dismembered the victims. Some of the body parts were flushed down the sewer, some were stuffed in the garbage bin, and some were dumped into the river. 
In 2003, Yang Shubin targeted victims in a nightclub in Jiaxiang City, Zhejiang Province. He asked Wang Hongye to come from Baotou in Mongolia to Jiaxiang, Zhejiang to rent a house. Yang Shubin laid a hostage into the rented place. Withdrew sixty thousand yuan from her bank account, and then he killed and dismembered the victim. When he was asked why he chose hostages as targets, Yang Shubin's answer was quite straightforward: "It makes money fast, and it's easy to get them." When Yang Shubin brought Zhang Yuliang, who had failed in business, and his old colleagues. Wang Hongye to Shenzhen. They met Ji Hongjie. Ji Hongjie arrived to the south at the age of sixteen, and he worked as a hostess in the entertainment venues to support her families back in the northeast. Ji Hongjie later claimed that when Yang Shubin recruited her, she refused at first, but Yang Shubin threatened her with her families. So reluctantly, she became Yang Shubin's girlfriend. Or his accomplice is more precisely. Ji Hongjie began to wear heavy makeup and frequently visited local high-end entertainment venues. However, her job as a hostess was just a disguise. Her real mission was to secretly select robbery targets under the guise of being a hostess. She carefully observed her fellow hostesses and picked out those with high incomes. Then she would approach them and try to make friends with them. At the same time, Yang Shubin, Wang Hongye, and Zhang Yuliang rented a house in the city center, bought knives, axes, bolt cutters, hand cracked meat grinders, and other tools, and waited quietly for Ji Hongjie's harvest results. Yang Shubin himself was tall, fair faced. Won glasses and looked kinda dignified. He would pretend to be this rich man and frequented nightclubs and other entertainment venues to fish the target. In order to get their targets, Yang Shubin claimed to be the boss of a power plant. While Wang Hongye and Zhang Yuliang flattered him honestly, while to gain favor, Yang Shubin was generous when giving tips to the hostesses. And he often bought gifts as well. After a few times, the hostesses would take the initiative to call him and ask him to meet to provide services. Once the girls took the bait and entered the rented house, they'd lose their freedoms and lives. They were subjected to inhuman tortures and forced to disclose their saving details. When Yang Shubin and Wu Hongye went out to withdraw money, Ji Hongjie and Zhang Yuliang were left to guard the girls. After getting the money, they were cruelly killed and dismembered these girls, then threw them into rivers, garbage cans, sewers, and other places to destroy the evidence. Yang Shubin explained that he had advised a set of procedures for the crime: the robbery targets must be. Determined by him, the dedicated mobile phones purchased before the crime must have lucky numbers like triple seven or triple eight. The rented houses used as the murder site must be in high-end residential areas to match the identity of this disguised rich man of him. The rented places must have bathtubs to facilitate dismembering the corpses. Knives and axes must never be used to chop up the corpses to avoid making loud noises that might alert neighbors. And baseball caps must be worn when withdrawing money from the bank, with the brim covering the face to prevent being photographed by the CCTVs. Despite detailed planning, they left clues when committing crimes in Jilin and were eventually listed to the wanted notice by the police. They had to change their names and fled to distant places. After the arrest, Wang Hongye, who was in the late stage of lung cancer, did not have much time left. And after being escorted back to Harbin, his family was allowed to visit him. He repented endlessly, 
The only time he called his son was on his son's tenth birthday. After that, the father and son had no more contact. Among the four suspects, Zhang Yuliang had changed his appearance the most. He said that to evade arrest by the police, he had deliberately gained weight over the years. And after being caught in Baotou, he hugged his wife and cried bitterly, leaving behind two sentences: one, "Take good care of the children," and "Don't come to find me again." Three days later, his wife sold their business and had since disappeared. Zhang Yuliang confessed that he had worked as a waiter and sold beers, but there was this woman who lived with him, cheated on him, and took all his hard-earned money. In his downturn, he met Yang Shubin and embarked on a criminal path. After the first murder, he often had nightmares and trembled at the sight of the police and police cars. Though he had tried his best to act normal. He had wanted to stop, but the money he received was, you know, too much. In the later stage, because the money he had shared with Yang Shubin only just too steady and make him filthy rich, he stayed with Yang Shubin to the end. I was afraid and had nightmares when I slept. Yang Shubin confessed. At the end of the interrogations, he begged the police not to tell his son about the matter, afraid that his son would not be able to live. With his head held high in the future, and he said Ji Hongjie did not know about what he had done, and he even had the idea of killing her. While、well, he wanted to leave her out of this, since he did not want his son to lose both of his parents, Ji Hongjie confessed that even though she was reluctant to be the evil, she felt that over the years Yang Shubin had given her a home, so she didn't want to lose him. Five years after changing their names and fleeing to distant locations, Ji Hongjie's brother and his son returned to their hometown in Jilin during the Spring Festival in 2012. Ji Hongjie's brother said that he had never imagined that his sister would commit such outrageous crimes. In his eyes, although his sister was domineering, she would not actively provoke others. Perhaps many things had happened over the past few years that he did not know about, and had changed her. You know, as the brother, he wanted to help his sister, though he couldn't revert the time. All he can do now is to raise his sister's son to adulthood. Yang Shukai, Yang Yang Shubin's brother, had sold a house in Baotou, and the two snooker clubs that they ran for a living were also sold. He had left only the food massage parlor to maintain their life costs. He was now accompanying his mother, who was being treated in Harbin. After learning that the eldest son's affair, the mother's health completely collapsed. Before the Spring Festival in 2012, after Yang Shubin and others were interrogated in Harbin, they were immediately escorted back to Jilin. And the Shipping Distant Public Security Bureau set up a special task force to reveal the case again. The police in Jilin Province had stated that four of the suspects confessed to the robbery and murder in Jilin City. They also admitted to committing a total of six similar crimes between 2000 and 2004 in places in Shenzhen and Zhejiang, stealing nearly two million yuan and killing and dismembering ten female companions. In October and November of 2011, two individuals were arrested and four were dismissed from their public positions in Xinxian County, Shanxi Province. Additionally, all three directors of the county's public security bureau since 2003 were disciplined, and the director of the Luoyang City Public Security Bureau was ordered to conduct a thorough investigation by the Provincial Public Security Department. The four suspects were able to bleach their identities and evade legal sanctions because of the care they received from the Xinxian County Police. In 2013, Ji Hongjie was sentenced to life imprisonment. Wang Hongye died of cancer shortly after being imprisoned. On the 2nd of November 2016, Jilin City, with two gunshots, Yang Shubin and Zhang Yuliang were executed. 
With this, the four-person criminal gang that began committing crimes in 2002 was officially declared over. The Supreme Court determined that the two main culprits dismembered two people. A newspaper reporter learned that, although rumors and even some media mentioned that Yang Shubin's gang killed and dismembered ten people, but according to the court, Yang Shubin and Zhang Yuliang had dismembered a total of two people. And the criminal ruling issued by the Supreme Court regarding the crimes committed by the two in August 2002, Yang Shubin and four others lured. Two female escorts to a rental place in Jilin City extorted more than 120,000 yuan in cash and valuables, and then killed and dismembered them with cruel means. In addition, the court found that on the 26th of December 2002, Yang Shubin, along with Ji Hongjie and another man, lured two young women to a rental place, threatened the two to hand over their, their bank passwords. Defrauded relatives of about 100,000 yuan in the name of doing business and then escaped. They assaulted the two women, but did not endanger their lives. On the 20th of June 2001, Yang Shubin, Zhang Yuliang, and another man used the same method to rob 200,000 yuan from a woman in Wendeng City, Shandong Province, and assaulted her without endangering her life. So remember the crime timeline. Only this and this are true. The Supreme Court believes that Yang Shubin and Zhang Yuliang, for the purpose of illegal possession, adopted violent and coercive means to rob others of their property and intentionally deprived others of their lives. Their actions constituted robbery and homicide. Yang Shubin organized, planned, and colluded with others to commit robbery and murder. He was the principal offender of murder. Zhang Yuliang participated in the premeditation and specifically committed robbery and murder. He was also the principal offender of murder. Both of them played a major role in the joint crimes of robbery and murder and were the main offenders. Both were approved to be executed. Deprived of political rights for life, and all personal property was confiscated. Ji Hongjie had been sentenced to life in prison, and Wang Hongye died in cancer not long after arrested. On the second of November, this four-person criminal gang was completely over. Hmm, I know you will be as confused as I was. I'm not saying because the number of victims they killed is less, their guilt will be lighter. But I am surprised myself that the media would go this far to decorate this case. It could be that the truth isn't as catching as this huge number of victims story. I only found it weird and started to dive the internet looking for truth was because I found the storyline of Yang Shubin was contradictory. You know, in the beginning, he was this cold and logical person who analyzed everything before taking any actions, showing no remorse at all when he committed crimes. He could be terrified of the death penalty, but I doubted if he would be having nightmares and couldn't sleep at night because of the killing he had done. As all the other serial killers, the reason for them not wanting to sleep would be, you know, they want to revise their crimes and retaste the excitement. Plus, the verdict too strange, as if Ji Hongjie indeed participated that many killing and murders. I bet she wouldn't be sentenced to life imprisonment only. Although the fact is that these interesting stories about this crime gang didn't explicit the punishment. Ji Hongjie received shall be a sign that they were all made up, as China is not a country that generally imposes lenient sentences. Here, I found another publish of this story by a newspaper reporter. Let me tell the story written by the reporter. The reporter learned from inquiries that after preliminary investigation and evidence collection, Yang Shubin and Zhang Yuliang sentenced to death by Jilin Intermediate People's Court in the first instance in 2013. After the verdict was pronounced, both appealed. 
and September of the following year, the Jilin Provincial High People's Court reopened the trial according to law and revoked the original verdict for retrial due to evidence issues. On the 20th of May, 2015, Jilin Intermediate People's Court retried the case and still sentenced Yang Shubin and Zhang Yuliang to death. After the verdict was pronounced, the two appealed again. The Provincial High Court held another trial and rejected appeals of the two in February 2021, upholding the original verdict and requesting approval from the Supreme Court. On the afternoon of the 1st of November 2021, the reporter went to Jilin Detention Center, hoping to gain insight into these two cruel murderers. Unfortunately, Yang Shubin declined to meet with reporters, citing with health reasons. He looked very clean and gentle, without any sense of cruelty, said the prison guard who had watched Yang Shubin for more than four years. Speaking of Yang Shubin, the first comment from the prison guard was, the person is very insidious and doesn't show joy or anger. The prison guard introduced that only when Supreme Court's approval of the death sentence was read out, did Yang Shubin's expression become a little solemn with a light frown revealing changes in emotions. His cellmates also felt for the first time that he was unhappy, quoted, because he didn't talk much, but this time, the silence wasn't as natural as it was before, unquoted. During the other nearly five years, Yang Shubin never smiled and he wouldn't talk to prison guards. He never showed a smile, cry, or anger. He had always been this poker face. Quoted, without such psychological quality, it may not be possible to do such cruel things, unquoted. One prison guard evaluated. Even with his cellmates, Yang Shubin always said, that he had never done those outrageous actions, only that he had robbed money to make a living and said he believed he could win this case and would not be sentenced to death. No one knew if he was comforting himself psychologically or habitually hiding his insidiousness. This person is very insidious, supervised him for four years, but I can only say that I don't know him well and can't figure out what was in his mind at all. Such people are rare, the prison guard said. In the eyes of the prison guard, the only time Yang Shubin showed some human warmth was when he occasionally mentioned his son. Quoted, very little, he mentioned his son and said sorry to his son. He never mentioned other relatives, his brother or girlfriend. See, he is not our see anymore with the narrations like this. Zhang Yuliang's style was somewhat similar without showing emotions, but relatively more enthusiastic. When speaking, he paid special attention to use this polite language. If he didn't want to answer the reporter's questions, he would always say sorry and express his regret very considerately. Quoted, this makes it impossible for you to complete the interview task. I am very sorry, but I don't really want to say anything about it. Please understand. Whenever seeing Zhang Yuliang, the reporter had always found it difficult to associate him with such a cruel and murderous killer. He was a slightly overweight, middle-aged man, about 5 foot 5, very fair-skinned, wearing glasses, civilized in words. He sat there up straight with his hand on his knees, and there was no uncomfortable movement. Quoted, you only knew me through the media, but the real me is not like that. Unquoted, Zhang Yuliang said to the reporter, but he refused to say what kind of person he really was. As long as he was asked about the past, whether it was about the case, family, or his own experience, he had only one response. The past is over. I don't want to mention it or touch the memories of the past. When asked about his feelings the night before his execution, he said, of course, I will regret it, but it's okay. I have enough psychological quality to stay calm. This was the only positive answer Zhang Yuliang gave about his situations in more than half an hour of communication. He said he would sleep peacefully at night and not think too much. 
However, although he repeatedly emphasized that his mood was stable and he had long expected the result and would face it calmly, he still said something reflecting fluctuations in his mood in the reporter's repeated questions. Quoted, I'm not in the mood now. As for me, I value dignity. Officer Cui also said Zhang Yuliang was a person with a particularly strong sense of self-esteem. During his detention, none of his family members visited him. Not did they send him clothes or money. He did not contact his family either. He might have a child, but he never mentioned it, let alone other relatives. When he lacked clothes and medicine, it was the prison guards who helped him, so he especially respected the prison guards. The humane management of the detention center was the only topic he was willing to talk. Quoted, he thinks too highly of himself and always feel that if Yang Shubin had listened to his opinion, they would not have been caught. He still thinks so even now. However, he did not resent Yang Shubin and felt that since he was caught, he had to admit defeat. Officer Cui introduced. What made Officer Cui most grateful was that Zhang Liang had confessed such words as if he had not been caught at that time, he would have committed crimes again. Fortunately, they were caught and the hidden danger was eliminated. At that time, I chatted with him and asked him if he had thought that the victims were, you know, all young women. Well, they had parents and they had futures or they could have been married. Then you think about the harm caused to others when you committed the crimes. Zhang Yuliang did not speak at the time, but he later expressed repentance and regret, felt sorry for the victims, and wanted to donate his body to society to atone for his sins. But in the end, it came to nothing for various reasons. Quoted, let's take this matter as a warning to posterity, Zhang Yuliang finally said to the reporter. The story ends here. From the beginning to the end of this reported story, the personality of the two protagonists finally become synchronized, correspondent to each other. But it must be said that who knows if this is just a story tailored to suit the personal judgment of people like me. It is actually very difficult to do cases in China because the pictures released by the authorities are too few, basically zero. And the court judgments are always only a few words. The complete storylines are rarely disclosed. Too many cases are just based on the court's verdict and endless speculations from writers and authors of the stories. And lucky as in my previous video, there are quite some police officers and forensics doctors that have participated in the crime investigations to reveal cases to the public based purely in their memories and some old personally collected work photos of the old times. We all understand that memory is deceptive and no one can guarantee that their memory is 100% true. Although many details of these criminal cases are the subjective speculation and speculation of the authors, who says the inferences of interrogators and investigators must be correct, then they have to deduct the stories of crimes themselves. Well, these speculations may not be accurate, and the truth may only be known by the parties involved. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you like my videos. I'm done now, finally, what's the story, and see you in the next one. Once Ji Hong Jie selected a cut. targets. Enthusiastic, more enthusi more enthusiastic. Why this word is so difficult to pronounce for me? Anyway.